Alright, so I guess you successfully got to part number three of this tutorial session um, in which you will learn how to generate a Gaussian input using Avogadro software and how to run a job. And finally, we're going to analyze the output of a single point energy calculation. We're going to start by drawing the water molecule. So you're going to do this by opening Avogadro, selecting the draw tool selecting oxygen, and then just clicking in the display. And I think I froze. No, oh, all right. <laughs> so there's your water molecule. Um, and the next step is a very important one for any Gaussian calculation that you must do on all your molecules, which is the geometry optimization. So now you have a choice between two options. For small molecules, you're fine just doing extensions, optimized geometry. But as soon as you get over five atoms and more, um, you're really better off doing auto optimization using this tool here. So let's do this. Going to click on Start and wait a couple of seconds for this to stabilize. So usually second or third decimal place uh, constant is fine so I'm going to click on stop uh, if you still are not sure that this geometry is your optimal one don't worry uh, Gaussian will read your optimization automatically for itself and we're going to see how to do this using the Gaussian input so let's do that we're going to create the input clicking on extension Gaussian dot 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 which we're going to open a new window Gal Gaussian input and here you have the different parameters that you can alter to fit your needs so let's input the title which would be water SP for a single point then we have to select the type of calculation which would be single point energy but you can also have geometry optimization or frequencies select the theoretical model you have a whole bunch of them uh, for small molecules restricted heart rate focus is fine but for bigger ones you can use B3 LIP or MP2 uh, so if you want to know which theoretical model you should be using you should go to that theoretical model section into in the um, written PDF tutorial same thing goes for the basis set uh, here we have 6-331 GD, which is good for small molecules. There are different basis sets doing different jobs. Um, and you should also read about them more in the PDF tutorial. Then you have the charge and multiplicity. They're done for you automatically. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, and this is it. Um, you have the preview for the input here in the bottom. So you have the uh, mole molecular coordinates for each atom, you have the charge and multiplicity, you have the title, and finally the command line for Gaussian. When you're ready, you click uh, on generate, but before that, it is crucial that you check that your number of processors, which is right here, is equal to 1. Unfortunately, Gaussian, well, our version of Gaussian, which is 0, 9, W can only use one processor at a time, so uh, one core. And if you have more than two processors, chances are you're going to get an error as an output. So don't waste your time, just put it at one and then you can click on the generate button. It will prompt you to save your file. That's what I'm going to do. I have a directory in the G. 09W here that I called input output IO. I'm going to go there and I'm going to save it as water molecule.com. So I have water sp.com and I click on save. Because I already had it before, I'll have to replace it. So yes. And I click on close. Now I can close this too. And because I don't want to keep that molecule as CML extension, 
I can discard it. Now let's open Gaussian and run the calculation. For this you go to File, Open, and you have to select the file you want to work with. For this you have to get back to the same directory that your file is in, and then here in the bottom select the All Files, which let you see all the file extensions. So don't worry that all your files are gone, they're just there, but not visible. Uh, so now we select water sp.com and click on open. You will see a new window called existing file job edit, uh, which is a like a preamble to the actual calculation. So Gaussian just try, tries to make sure you don't screw up with the input. Uh, here you have the first line, which is the path to your file, the root section, which describes what you're doing, the title section, and everything else just like before. Uh, so let's see what the different buttons here are. The top one is the one you should click if you want to actually run the calculation, and the OK button is the one you should click if you just want to see what the input is and not actually calculate anything. So clearly I'm going to click on the top one, run. Gaussian prompts me to save the file, so the outputs, I'm going to save it in the same directory as before, but with a different extension, extension uh, .out. Click on save. Yes, I want to overwrite it. So here my calculation is performing, and as soon as the job is done, you're going to see processing complete right here. It's important to wait until it actually is complete. If you're working with bigger molecules, it might take hours, so you have to be patient. Um, on every successful Gaussian job, in the end you will see a wonderful quote, so take your time and read it. To visualize the output better, uh, we can open it in Notepad. So there you go. Uh, so now let's analyze what different things you can get out of a single point energy calculation. The first part all the way until this is just copyright, so let's keep it for now. Then you actually get your output calculation. The first line here just reminds you of what uh, calculation you did, in case you forgot. Uh, then you get the different coordinates, uh, the changed input orientation that Gaussian did on your molecule to put it in a conventional way. You also get a distance uh, matrix in angstroms to let you know what are the distances between the atoms. So if you actually want to get the energy, it's right here, right on top of population analysis, and it's called SCF done. So this number for water is negative 76. Uh, the units are Hartree Fox, so atomic unit of energy. If you want to convert this, uh, you can either use the Microsoft Excel converter there, I just did for you, uh, or you can just Google it. Uh, so there's a different conversions that you can get. Uh, finally, if you scroll down, you can you get the Millikan atomic charges layout. It tells you how much charge there is in each atom, so we can verify that oxygen actually has negative charge and ox and hydrogens both get approximately safe positive charge, which makes sense. Great. And this is the end of your output. There are more information, but we're just going to skip this for now because it's a bit more complicated. Uh, so let's close the output. Uh, now you can verify that your molecule did not change in weird ways by opening Avogadro again and opening the output file just to check it out. So everything's fine. Uh, we got the energy for the right molecule. So great. Uh, this is the end of part 3 of the tutorial. Uh, in the next part uh, we will see how to calculate uh, molecular orbitals and how to visualize them in Avogadro. Okay.